What's good YouTube? I'm Robert with the Crosscut Creations channel. Today we have a little bit different style of video for you. I'm going to show you how I prepare resin and wood blanks for pen turning. First thing we need to do is we're going to start by taking the tubes out of our of our bag here and here we go. Now they're going to come mostly looking nice and shiny. We don't like nice and shiny. We want to scratch them up a little bit. So right here, I have even just an old used uh, 220 grit paper. I just want to show you guys that it is possible. It doesn't matter what grit, it doesn't matter how old, as long as there's something on there, you want to scuff the tube up. So uh, what I like to do is I like to hold it in between my middle uh, finger and thumb, and then I put some pressure with my pointer finger, and I just scratch and roll it a couple times just to make sure I get all the way around and there you can see that there's scratches in that tube so I'll go ahead and do the other one while I'm at it it's nice if you can batch things out and do all of the same type of procedure at the same time so I'll go ahead and do the same thing middle finger and thumb pointer finger in the middle so I can have downward pressure and then I rotate as I go just a few scratches this just helps the glue bond to the blank that you're going to work on so there we are we are we have our tubes scratched up so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for the length of our blank. Now, these two blanks that I have here, the resin blank and the wood blank, are cutoffs from another project, but because of the style of pen that I'm doing in this case, this is a Sierra style, it's actually a Wall Street 2, but it's a, it's a Sierra style pen, so I have enough uh, here, you can see. I put the blank up towards the end here, and you can see I have plenty of room so I'm going to grab a sharpie from over here and I'm just going to measure out I have this roughly measured and I'm going to draw a line just past where the tube is so that's going to be the same for the resin and and my wood blanks so there we are again. See, I have, I have just enough room there. So I will draw a line just past our tube and we'll be good to go. So we've made our way over to the bandsaw and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up my mark with my bandsaw blade and I'm going, once I turn my bandsaw on, I'm going to run this through the bandsaw and I'm going to trim it to size. This will be the same for resin blanks as well as wood blanks. I do want to stop and say that I want you to do what's safe for you in your shop. Your safety is your responsibility. If you're not comfortable with making a cut or doing something in your shop, then you shouldn't do it. So safety is on you. Um, I know there are jigs available that will help you cut the perfect size blank. I don't have those jigs, so this is just how I do things. I also want to uh, add that this is how I do things. This is not the only way to do things, but if you're just starting out, uh, this could be a starting point for you to find what works for you. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking. I'm going to cut these blanks. Again, this is the same for resin and wood. I'm going to cut where my line is, and I'll see you on the flip side. We're over at the lathe now, and we are ready to drill out our blanks. The way we drill out our blanks will be the same for, again, resin and wood. I have my blanks down to size since we just cut them at the bandsaw. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these blanks into my into my chuck here, one at a time, obviously. And 
And I like drilling on the lathe because it is super precise and it finds dead center every single time without me having to do any measurement or any calculation or anything. It's just right there, ready to go. So what I do is I bring up the tailstock where it's close to uh, touching but not quite. I lock this down and when I drill on the lathe, I keep it somewhere between 350 and 400 RPM just to keep it down a bit. And the one thing to remember when you're drilling out a blank is to clear the chips frequently, back out frequently, so that way you don't build up heat. And once, and then uh, you, you don't build up heat, and then you also can avoid potential blowouts uh, on the other end. Now, the other way to do this is with a vise on a drill press. That way is absolutely achievable. That's the way I did it for a long time. I was just fortunate enough to upgrade at some point uh, a little while back, so that's what I did. But um, measuring with the vise and uh, drilling with the drill press is uh, you can achieve the same result. So I'm going to turn the lathe on, I'm going to dial in my speed, and then I'm going to drill out the blank and this is again this is the same for resin or wood all right we've turned our lathe on we're at 345 355 360 365 375 380 all right we'll call that good so I'm gonna put the left hand on the Jacobs chuck and I'm just going to slowly rotate the tailstock and then this will seat and you'll see that this will start to drill out the blank no measurement necessary and I have nice ribbons coming out of the blank so now I'm going to back off a little bit and I'm going to take an old toothbrush or an unused toothbrush and just clear away any any mess we have and then we'll keep going until we get to the end of the blank. If you start to feel the resistance, that probably means that you went a little too long with your drilling procedure and should have cleared out some chips before that, which is what I just did. So I'm gonna back out a little bit. I'm gonna clear these chips. And I'm going to finish this hole. If we take our blank out, we'll see. There's the entry hole. There we go. And the opposite side, so not too bad. There we are. So now we're gonna do the same exact procedure for a wood blank. So I'm going to take my wood blank and I'm gonna put it in our in our jaws, in our tighten that down. I'm gonna turn this on quickly just to make sure we're running true. And it looks like we are, so I'm gonna turn that off. I haven't changed any lathe speeds at all. So right now I'm going to move our tailstock back up. Now, another thing to keep in mind is I'm drilling these for Sierra style pens. So this drill bit is a 27 64th inch. The bit that you're going to use is going to be dependent on the kit that you use. So that's one thing that you're gonna to need to pay attention to. Same procedure as the resin blank clear the chips frequently to avoid building up heat and we're good to go. Again we're backing out frequently to clear chips. The more compacted they are the warmer they're getting or at least that's been my experience so I'll take our toothbrush and just clear those out. If you have too much heat build up you run the risk of blowing the blank apart, which is not good, obviously. And 
and we're through on the other side so we'll back this out release our blank and there we are there's our entry and exit holes so there's our two blanks together now when you finish drilling these blanks they could be a little warm so what I do is before I go to glue them up I let them sit for a little bit just to cool down so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let these cool down for a little bit and then we'll be back to do the glue up now that we have our blanks cool to the touch or at least room temperature they don't feel warm I'm going to show you how I glue in these tubes now with resins or acrylics or hybrids if it's any if the blank has anything other than wood I use a two-part epoxy this is a five-minute epoxy that I got from the classic nib um, so what I do is I just I open these up I pour some epoxy in here I mix it up and then we go ahead and glue the tube into the blank into the hole we just created we're just going to mix this epoxy up and then we are going to insert glue our tube into our blank so once we've got this somewhat mixed up or mixed up we're going to take the epoxy and we're just going to coat the tube just get it all over it, this doesn't have to be nice and neat it can be it can be messy because we will clean everything up later Now when I go to insert my tube, I'm going to work this in just a little bit, twist this around, make sure the glue gets all over the tube, and then once I get close, I'm going to take my pen insertion tool and I'm just going to sink this just below the surface. And I'll, I'll try and scrape off some of the epoxy that squeezed out again this doesn't have to be perfect it's just something to kind of make a or make our lives a little easier a little later so our tube is just under uh, the surface of our blank here on the other end you want to check we're in good shape here because the tube is completely in the blank so we're just going to let that sit there sit here for a little while and let that dry now when i go to do a wood blank I use medium CA medium CA glue there are some people who use epoxy there are some people who use thin CA thick CA medium CA um, again this is all what uh, you find is uh, useful to you in your shop and uh, what you find works this is what I find works so again we take our scratched tube that we uh, where we scratched it on sandpaper and we're gonna coat this tube in medium CA glue you want to try to not get it on your fingers because CA glue and skin is a nightmare so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on kind of thick and I'm just going to insert it into the blank now this can set up quickly so be ready to make sure this is it I'm gonna take the pen insertion tool I'm gonna to make sure that we're just below the surface there and we're below the surface on the other end as well so again I'm going to let that sit and set up even though it can be quick setting I do let it fully cure so I'll probably come back to this in I don't know 20 minutes 30 minutes a couple hours depending on what I get myself into but once we're at this point we have our tubes glued in and the next step will be to make sure everything is flush and level with the tubes 
So I'll go ahead and let the glue dry and we'll see you back in a little while. When I recorded this the first time, I didn't realize that my mic was off. So I'm going to simulate what I did. There are a couple different ways you can square up the ends. One of the ways is to use some barrel trimmers or some pen reamers as they might be called. They will have different size uh, shafts on them. You wanna pick the shaft that fits into your tube comfortably. And this spins either through a drill or a drill press or just like drilling on the lathe. This eventually spins and it takes away the wood until it's flush against the wood and then you're able to uh, insert your bushings into your pen and you'll be ready to start turning. The other way is through a jig that Tim Geist has and uh, that, that he produces and I have. Uh, the way it works is you have your pen blank, you have your jig. There's this set screw at the top. You can, you, you have the jig here, you have your punch where you set it into the jig and you want to make sure that the punch doesn't go through it doesn't go through the end of the tube you lock this down and you set it up against your miter gauge you turn the disc sander on and you just lightly touch this to the to the disc and it flushes up your your blank perfectly so you do that to both sides flip it around touch it up make sure your 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 miter gauge and your jig are square to each other nice and tight and you're able to touch that up and you'll have a, a perfectly level um, and ready to go blank so that's how this jig works. And at this point, we're pretty much ready for turning. Thanks for hanging out with me on this one. I had a lot of fun showing you my process for preparing blanks. This is being recorded July, 2019. I started pen turning a, probably a year and a half, two years ago. So my process has evolved quite a bit in those two years, so who knows uh, how it'll change going forward. But again, as of July 2019, this is how I prepare things. Uh, this is how I prepare my blanks. How do you prepare your blanks? If you have any comments, any questions, any tips, anything, leave them in the comments. I will reply to them and hopefully we'll learn some more. So if you like this video, make sure you give it the thumbs up. Make sure you comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.